All right. Hello, everyone. How are you today? It's K. So this is the new week started. This is the fourth of September, fourth uh, of October. Sorry, and this is Monday. So uh, looks like markets are retracing, and but still retracements are active. So uh, we might be able to capture some pips for the retracements today. And looks like today um, the JPY is very weak, and USD is also very weak too. So uh, we will focus on these pairs and see what's happening in the markets right now. All right, so let me squeeze my face and start the session right now. So, but before starting here, just a quick disclaimer as usual. Um, the contents here is basically based on my own understanding and experience. So when you take trades, please do at your own risk. And also, since this is a live stream, if you can please follow the rules and lives that on this live stream, that will be great. Rules and guidelines, please you can follow, that will be great. Because after all, we are all here to learn. So yeah, how are you everyone? How's it going? I hope you had a great, great weekend last week. So uh, I went to Expo, Dubai Expo the other day, and it was so much fun, so much fun. And also yesterday, I went to, uh, me, me and my wife went to Armani Hotel Lounge with a Japanese dress and had some drinks and some snacks. It was also very good too. So since we are course, actually on the fourth month after I moved to Dubai, so uh, time flies, but now I have, I'm getting used to it here, the new culture, new environment and start to explore in the season in October onwards in Dubai. Okay, but uh, yeah, I hope you have a great, great weekend and better trading day also today too. All right, so let me quickly say hi to everyone on the chat. Let's see, Minoru Endo, good to see you here. And Wong, Asif, good to see you. Thanks for joining, as, as always. And Yumit, good to see you too. And Jai, good to see you too. Okay, he has a quick question. Uh, what do you think will happen with oil prices in the UK currency currently? Um, all right, we'll check the oil after uh, in this live stream. So uh, it was uptrending and I mentioned that yesterday on the forecast, I was expecting the market breaks the resistance level. And once the market breaks the resistance level from oil, then I expect the market goes up. So let's see if it happens today or not. Otherwise, you can retrace back to the Tenkan Sen, my view. All right, Robert, good to see you. And Arukadi, Anif, good to see you too. All right, Robert, good to see you again. Thank you for joining. And then Zara, Muhammad, good to see you too. All right, John, Romark, Antipas, and Alex, Orvin, good to see you too. All right, so... Let's start. So let me open the chart. So here is a plain candlesticks. And today, as the title says on the live stream, I would like to do it with a completely white candlesticks. So let me turn. So right now we have bullish as white and bearish of blue, but let me turn everything white. All right, so we have all plain white candlesticks here. Plus, we place each mogu here to see charts. So this is for fun and see if we can analyze charts in this way. So uh, this white colors and candlesticks I started to do when I was losing for the first two years. I was totally depending on the signals and also indicators and color of candles. I turned, I was actually on the red and green candles the classic ones and also I was using moving average I wasn't using the Ichimoku at that time but I was using other indicators and colored uh, colored candlestick too but uh, after I got some losses huge losses I came up with up the idea of like how about I 
don't show any indicators. And I made the chart as a very plain, only with the candlesticks. And afterwards, I thought, how about I change the color of the candlestick all white? And what's going to happen in my brain? I thought. So I did it and tested it. And as it turned out, I had much more deeper understanding about the candlesticks and patterns and price actions. So now I turn the bearish candlestick to blue and bullish to white like this. But this is actually for the live stream purposes only. If I see charts for myself, I prefer all white candles like this. So today, since uh, this is Monday and it looks like the market's a bit slow retracing, so let's try this. Let's try with all white candles with Ichimoku and see if we can still see charts or not. All right, so let's get started. So which ones to start? So let me start with the uh, forex pairs. I will pick up a couple of forex pairs, which one is the euro data. So since data is very weak right now, euro data as a pair is going up today. And it looks like it's retracing back to Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen. So I'm actually on the trade euro data and I'm still running some profits. But uh, this is retracement, right? You see, when you see Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, and Shikou Span flat like this, this is, the market is not trending. Right, so I mean, uh, when you see the Kumo angle, the shape and the angle of the Senko Span B flat and A flat, and also you see Kijun Sen flat. Right, so when you see these three lines to be flat, that means the market is ranging. And what I mean by range is a bit different from the range in definition. Uh, in candlestick price actions or a Western version of the range. What I mean by range is that the power balance between buyers and sellers are 50-50. And that's what I mean by range. And that's exactly what's happening in the market. Where you see Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, that means buyers and sellers are in 50-50 uh, ratio. So that means the market could go up here or it could go down this way and we don't know which way it's going. But as an Ichimoku nature, market tends to come back to the Tenkan Sen in nine candles after the previous breakout or the bounce. And also Kijun Sen, the market can come back to Kijun Sen in the 26 candles after the previous breakout or the bounce. As a nature. So with that in mind, the market retracing backwards while Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, and Tenkan Sen flat too. So that means the market is going up this way. In the short term, I mean in the lower time frames, like one hour or 30 minute time frames, it should be moving upwards. So let me just mark the Kijun Sen Tenkan Sen levels. Yeah, so Tenkan Sen right now is 1.1660 level. And Kijun Sen here is on a 1.1734 level. Right? And if you can just remember these two lines, two price levels, then I go down to the 30 minute chart. So just watch out. This is 30 minute chart. And you see that this is right now Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, but it was up. Kijun Sen and Kumo was up right now, or I mean previously. And this is where I took the buy here and I'm still holding the buy but uh, the price is I expect the price goes up in this way in terms of 30 minute time frame so that means I expect the market goes up in consecutive end waves bullish end waves and reach to initially Tenkan Sen um, Tenkan Sen in the daily chart right so this is Tenkan Sen in the daily chart and if the market breaks that level, then the next target is going to be on the Kijun Sen, um, Kijun Sen in the daily chart. So this is basically how I see charts in this way. And in this, in, in this particular trade, 
I follow a 30 minute uptrend. And I don't follow one hour chart, I don't follow four hour chart, I don't follow daily chart. Because there is no trend on higher time frames. The only trend I see it here is in the 30 minute chart. And I follow this 30 minute chart and the price potential reaches to either Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen and could take profit over there. So this is the Kijun Sen retracement strategy. Uh, if the market is re ranging, retracing like this, so once again in the daily chart, you see the huge retracement right now, and the market could go back to the Tenkan Sen or Kijun Sen in the daily chart. But you don't buy here. Just because the market retracing backwards, you don't buy here because you never know um, if they continuously be up or not. But in order to know that, you go down to the lower time frames, in this case, 30 minute chart. And then if you find the 30 to be uptrend, you can follow a 30 uptrend. And once the market reaches to this level, you can take profits or you can continuously try out the profits and if the market breaks upwards, then you can still run some profits over time. But if the market re resisted here in the daily key, daily Tenkan Sen and retraces backwards, then you better exit. Because after all, this is in 50-50, the market is in equilibrium 50-50 chance. So, but in terms of the price action, since we have the all white candles today, let me also talk about this white candlesticks also. So if you see this chart pattern, do you see the market is potentially going up? Or do you think the market is going to be ranging or the market will be retracing backwards? So my question is, if you only see price action like this, then do you think that the market goes up continuously? or? It will retrace backwards from here, or it will be range afterwards. Which one do you think it will go? Yeah, I would just take a vote here. So, I mean, I won't take a vote officially on the form, but you can just type your answer, whether it's up or range or down for, for the future forecast, potential scenarios here. And you look at the candlesticks. You look at the candlesticks to see which way the market is going right now. If you can also mention about the reason why you think it's, it goes up or down or range, that will be great too. So candlestick patterns are very important, very powerful. And I do this on any time frames, whether it's a one minute chart to five minute chart, all the way up to daily chart, weekly chart, or even monthly chart. I always look at the candlesticks and price actions. So, okay, I start to see some comments and answers here now. All right, up, all right, up, 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 up. Okay, I think the range, all right, up, up, going up to Tenkan, all right, up, up, range, up, right, up, as you have uh, Dijo, all right. So, yeah, looks like we have many traders who think it's up, up trending. The market goes up continuously, right? So let me ask, uh, so why do you think it's up from the price action? Uh, why do you think it's up? Any ideas, any reasons? Okay. As it says, a uh, break of doji upwards, right? So that's one of them, yep. Doji candle, the previous one was Doji and it's broken upwards. So this is the continuation for the uptrend. Yeah, that's one. That's good. So you don't have to color to capture Doji candle like this, right? And you don't have to color the breakout. You don't have to color, but you can actually see these potential breakouts and patterns here too. Your eyes will get used to this. Right, so let's see. 
what else we can find here? HTTP share says uh, break doji candle and have uptrend. Okay, doji breakout is very popular here in this case. Doji candle and confirmation in uptrend, right? Breakout of doji and up, right? Exit from the pullback, trend up. Okay, uptrend line, pullback and hammer, little support, then engulfing following candles up. All right, so we can draw the support line. That's a good point too. Always keep in mind in the lines. So if you can draw the support line this way, then the market technically didn't touch here, but um, it may go up on this support line too. So uh, yeah, from this confirmation, it's uptrend also. That's good. Let's see. Yeah, range to bullish, right? Because higher high and higher lows, right? This is higher high, higher lows. Simply that means this is consecutive end waves. So that's also the sign of uptrend. That's true. Yeah, bullish engulfing. Yeah, so there is a bullish engulfing somewhere here. Um, yeah, I would say doji breakout is more powerful than engulfing in this structure. Previously, there was engulfing somewhere here, and it was a breakout. But it looks like not this time. This time, I would say doji breakout is more uh, reasonable to take. Yeah, and if you wonder which one is more stronger, whether it's a doji breakout or engulfing breakout, and I would say engulfing breakout is much stronger because when you see engulfing uh, candlestick, like inside bar, for example, uh, no matter how many candles there will be inside from the previous candle, those traders, those traders who are trading within these engulfing candlesticks, they put the stop losses up and down and there is an, an accumulation of the stop losses when it's engulfing and once it breaks it tends to go up or down very fast but doji is also um, reasonable to capture the breakout but doji in a sense a bit weaker than the engulfing breakout because doji has only one candlestick so within one one candlestick in this case in within a 30 minute chart Within 30 minutes of time, there was better buyers and sellers within the 30 minute chart who are trading maybe one minute or five minute charts. And they put stop losses above or below. And once it triggers, market tends to go up afterwards. But um, since this is only one candlestick accumulation of stop losses, um, sometimes it doesn't go very fast. But if the market sees the breakout afterwards, then there might be more buyers coming in in the future. That means in the long term, it's bullish for that direction. So it's a little bit about uh, it's a little bit of difference in between engulfing and doji breakout. But you can take either one for confirmations. Because the most important part is which way the market is going. In a short term, to me, term. All right, so, so yeah, we, we've got a lot of uh, comments here now, so that's good, that's good. So, yeah, to me, I would say that this is bullish also, because, uh, like everybody mentions here, Doji breakout. So there's Doji candlestick here, and also um, consecutive end wave looks to be valid, so once it breaks, I expect the market goes up. However, if the market breaks the support and start to go down from here, then this might become double top now, and if the neckline, which is actually over here at 1.1623 has been broken, then the market could retrace backwards all the way. 
and it might not gonna be a good timing for entry chance anymore. Okay. All right, so yeah, there is a head and shoulders in one hour time. Yep. Good. I, uh, this Ichimoku setting is the default in trading view. Yeah, trading view default Ichimoku is correct. Displacement and calculations. All right. Okay, Hussein took a short on Euro data, all right, at 1.1630. All right, so that will be here. So you just took the sell, a plus 25 pips. Okay. okay, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see if it goes up or no. But in terms of Ichimoku here, so let me show Ichimoku now. After this analysis, let me show Ichimoku. All right, so Ichimoku shows like this. Ichimoku shows that the Kumo flat and Kijun Sen flat and Chiko span above the candles. So that means this is bullish. But since Kumo flat and Kijun Sen flat, it may be traced backwards too. So the chance for the market to go up is 50 50 level. The market is in equilibrium. When buyers and sellers in a short to mid to long term because all the lines are flat now so market is losing its momentum here but since chikou span above the candles and also the price itself is above tenkan sen kijun sen kumo that means this is bullish not in terms of direction but in terms of momentum it's bullish Direction is flat, but the momentum is bullish. So in Ichimoku, you will focus on two things, direction and momentum. So since Chikou span above the candles and price above Tenkan Kijun Kumo, that means still there are more buyers than sellers in the market from short to mid to long term. So still, I would say buyers are dominant in the market. So, however, even the buyers are dominated than sellers in the market, it doesn't mean that the market breaks the resistance level. Because still buyers and sellers are equilibrium in an equal balance. So, how to say, like, uh, so it's like, um, it's like, uh, how do you say? Um, let's say you are on the boat and you are, so in the boat in the ocean, let's say there is a cold part and warm part on the ocean. If you ship, if the, if the ship is exactly on the Kijun Sen, that means the boat is actually sailing exactly on the cold and hot, uh, you know, ocean in between. It's sailing in between the cold, cold, uh, hot and cold ocean, so to speak. But if the price is above the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, especially Kijun Sen, and if Chikou span above the candles, that means the market is bullish in its momentum. So that means the boat is now sailing on the hot ocean. And the ship is sailing on the hot ocean, but um, it's just going flat. It's just going sideways. So that means the boat can go up um, anytime, right? Anytime soon because the boat is on the heat side. So that, that's what I mean by the buyers dominated in this situation. But if the market goes below the Kijun Sen, that means it becomes a bearish momentum. So the market itself 
is bearish, so the sellers can be attracted to the market. Right now, buyers are more attracted to the market, and that's why I say that this is bullish in its momentum. But uh, it doesn't mean that the market goes up from here. It might be ranging while buyers are dominated in this case. But it might be ranging because the direction is flat. So I hope you get this concept right. Uh, so we're talking about two different things. Direction and momentum here. So coming back to this topic here on the, on the chart, since we have the price above Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, Kumo, and it's correspond above the candles, this is bullish in its momentum. So the market can go up afterwards. However, in direction wise, since Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, Tenkan Sen flat, it may be traced backwards or it may be range afterwards. And with this in mind, you combine the analysis with what you said on the price action. So if you see the price action, there was a doji candle, doji breakout, and also consecutive end waves are forming. So the market could go up here. There is also a trend line bounce too. So the market could go up afterwards in this way. And once the market breaks the resistance level, then Kijun Sen will turn bullish. And Kuma also turns bullish. And then you can look for the buy chance afterwards. But if there is no indication in candlesticks, there is no uh, engulfing breakouts or uh, uh, doji breakouts in the markets, then most likely that will be a peer range and the market can retrace back to Kijun Sen in that scenario. Even if the price is above the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, and it goes above the candles, if there is no bullishness found on the, on the price action, the market can retrace backwards too. So, yeah, so there are two different types of analysis here about price action and also about the Ichimoku. But this is how you can combine these two and make it into your analysis. And if you only show white candles like this, it becomes easier. Well, actually, at first, it might be difficult, but uh, once you get used to it, it's very easy, it becomes very easy to identify about the candlesticks patterns and to see potential directions too with the candlesticks. So yeah, in this case, this is bullish. Now, this uh, most recent 30 minute chart candle is about to be a doji also. So this candlestick is going to close in about 2 minutes. And once it does, and if it closes within the doji candle, then we have to wait for the next candlestick, whether it goes up or down. Yeah, most likely it closes with the, with the doji candle. So uh, if it closes it, then we better wait for the breakout of either direction. So once the market breaks the high of the previous doji, then the market goes up continuously this way. But if the market breaks the previous two dojis here, the support, then it can retrace back to the Kijun Sen in 30 minute chart too. So that is that's my analysis in this particular condition. And I do this on any time frames. I do this on the daily chart, on the flower chart, weekly chart. A one hour chart or a 30 minute time frame. So this is just an example for you to, to remember. So let me let's just wait for the next 50 seconds until this candle close. In the meantime, let me get a water.
So it will close in about 20 seconds. Just watch the close. Right, sometimes for the last 10 seconds, the market goes up all the way and end with the bullish candle. So we'll see. Okay, closed and the doji candle was fixed. So now we have two consecutive doji candles. And that means the market is ranging for the last one hour because each candlestick shows 30 minutes. So for the next for the last one hour was ranging. So let's see from here if the market goes up or down. All right, let's see. Orvin says, "Hi K, can you check USCCAD? Thank you. All right, sure, I can check that." So let's come back to this chart afterwards. And in the meantime, let me go switch to USCCAD. All right, so first looking at the daily chart. So today, once again, I show the all, all white candlesticks to, to just, just to practice with this plain, no color candlesticks. So, um, yeah, so daily chart shows that this is ranging. The Kumo is flat right now. Chikospan is with the candles. And, and the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen are in the Kumo too. So this is a range. So although we see Kumo breakout, this might become fake and it can retrace backwards anytime in this condition. Okay, so let's go to the flower chart. All right, here's flower chart. And in the forward chart, this is bearish. The Kumo's down, Kijun Sen down, Tenkan Sen down, and Chikou Span broke the candles. So this is a nice new beginning of the downtrend. And I like this downtrend simply because there were con continuous, or there are a couple of times of Doji breakouts. So Doji was here, broken downwards, here. So, and also previously there was a, this wasn't a doji, but um, there was an, I would say, here is another um, doji candlesticks here. And it has broken downwards. So, the market broke this whole doji's downwards here. And this is a sign of the downtrend. This is a sign of the new downtrend, I would say. Otherwise, the market could have been ranging for a couple more hours or it might turn to bullish from here. But now, the market broke these consecutive dojis downwards and I see that there is a strong sellers in the market. So, let's break it down to one hour chart this time. Alright, and one hour chart also shows that the Kumo down, Kijun Sen down, Tenkan Sen down, and Chikou Span below the candles. This is good. It's a stable downtrend. So, in terms of the price action, before the breakout, what happens was there was a descending P wave. If you can capture this descending P wave, it's good that the market goes down continuously. So make sure to capture this top patterns whenever you see this you have to be able to capture these candlestick patterns so the lows are the same level highs are lower and this is descending p wave and descending p wave below the tenkan sen most likely breaks it downwards so i think this was a nice example like from textbook the market broke the level and goes downwards continuously Right, and before the breakout, there was a doji here too, so that was P wave plus doji breakout, and now it's going down very strongly. So, let me look into the lower time frame. Let's look into the five, and only show the price action candlesticks all white. 
to capture when to buy or sorry when to sell in this case okay so if you see chart like this when would you sell so this time i won't i won't show bollinger band or stochastics uh, because i want everybody to focus on the price action to trade so it has been going down it has been going down this way and now the market is pulling backwards so where would you be selling on this particular condition or what kind of scenario could be a sell point is my question let me enlarge chart so yeah the market is downtrending a couple of doji candles also but every time doji forms it's broken downwards so that's one of the patterns in this downtrend now it's going up so um if i just you know share my idea for now uh, I would say that since this is engulfing structure, so this is engulfing, meaning that the future candles are still included by the previous bullish candle. So I can see that there is an engulfing structure inside bar. And so once the market breaks the engulfing candles upwards, then simply I won't look for the sell chance anymore I won't look for sell because I don't see any bearishness when it happens however if the market goes down this way within the within the inside bar if the market floats up some some minutes and it goes bearish in waves for example consecutively and then most likely the market will break the support of the engulfing so before the breakout most likely i will already place in the cell and once the stop loss is triggered it goes down very fast that will be my scenario so this candlestick is going to close in two two minutes and 41 seconds so let's wait for the candle close so when I was a newbie, I thought that this is a breakout, but actually not. Until you see the candle close, you never know if that's a breakout or not. So let's just wait for the break. Let's just wait for the candle close in five, in about two minutes and ten seconds, to see how it plays out. Sanjay, I don't use Heikin Ashi, so I'm not sure. I prefer candlesticks with the Ichimoku. Yeah, because um, Ichimoku takes high and low for the last couple of days for Tenkan, Kijun, Sen, Kumo. And uh, when you think about it, Heikin Ashi doesn't show high and low in the price. And I also want to see the close price which you cannot do in Heikin Ashi, really. So that's why I prefer candlesticks better than Heikin Ashi. That's one of the reasons. And also, if you use Heikin Ashi, you can't use time cycles because the highs and lows are different from candlesticks. That's the second reason why I don't use Heikin Ashi. And also, uh, you know, Heikin Ashi is a bit lagging. It's great to capture the trend direction but you can capture trend direction by Kumo and Kijun Sen. You don't have to use Heikin Ashi. So that's why I stick to candlesticks. You can't see these breakouts in candlesticks in Heikin Ashi. That's why. So, uh, yeah, and looks like market is going up now. It will close in about 40 seconds. So let's see where it closes. It might close below the resistance. Sometimes it happens. The market goes all the way and create doji candle pin bar. So let's see. 
await forms in this case. All right, so now Kindle close above, this engulfing is fixed. So from here, most likely the market keeps going up this way. So I won't look for buy chance anymore. Sorry, I won't look for sell chance anymore. And I don't look for buy because higher time frames are still downtrending. And the market can be very tricky afterwards because this is where the sellers and buyers are fighting like a tug of war. So we better avoid when the market is kind of uncertain, like in this condition. So, uh, yeah, and so in case you sell, in case you sell right now, then you better exit when you see this condition. So usually I don't let the market run until the price hit the stop loss. I always exit before the price hit the stop loss. So if you can train, if you can train the risk management in that way, um, you can have a much less drawdown. And when the market goes toward the, towards your direction, you can win bigger, much bigger than the previous small losses. It's my advice. So this is also something that I say to GTS members is that the uh, when you see the graph of your uh, trades, trade uh, profits and losses, sometimes, you know, in MT4, MT5, you can actually get the report, PDF or Excel spreadsheet, and you can get the graph. In the graph, sometimes you, your graph might be looking like this. And this is not a good, uh, good, um, good result. So the start was here. Maybe start, I will just put the start here. Start here. And as you take trades, you make some profits over here. So that was a profit. But um, until you make profits here, you have some losses. You have some big losses and big wins. And I would say that this is unstable. So on the next couple of trades, you might lose everything and it goes down too. So that's a risk. I would say that this is not a stable, um, stable profit in, in the long run. And if you trade in this way all the time, you can't, you can't uh, run assets. You can't make assets in the long term. So my suggestion is to build a strategy that has like, like this end wave. This is an ideal graph that you want to draw. So whether you're backtesting or whether you're trading in the real market, if you see the graph and if it looks like this, then you can keep trading that way. Because you might have some break-evens and small losses, but next few trades can cover the previous small losses. And then after that, you might have some small losses again and break-evens, but once you win, you, win, you, can win, you can win bigger than the previous losses. So that's the, uh, that should be the strategy. And if you really master this way, then uh, things will be very easy, very simple. And I do this, I draw this graph, and that's why I say that I follow the trend by Ichimoku, and I take trades by lower time frames so that my risk percentage is very minimal. So usually I take 3% risk, so even the price hit the stop loss for some reason, I only lose 2% of my account. But uh, like I mentioned before, I won't usually um, let the market hit the stop loss, I will cut the loss before the price hit the stop loss. So, 
once again when you see this kind of condition where the market goes against the major direction in five then you better exit very soon because from here the market could have been could have going up this way and one hour chart might be flat and then also four hour chart could be flat too in the long term as the market keeps retracing backwards or keeps ranging from here that will affect the higher time frame conditions so the quick loss cut is the key to success in fact, I have this uh, spreadsheet. Let me just uh, quickly show it to you. Uh, this is the performance in the month of um, in the month of September, and um, I took I took eleven trades for the month of September. And uh, if you see this drawdown, if you only look at this part. The drawdown is very minimal for myself, so I take two percent of on each trade. And I take two trades at a time. So, for example, Euro JPY was the first trade on the 1st of September. So, I placed two positions here and I put top, stop losses at the same level. 70 pip stop, stop loss I take and then um, I exit at the same time. So, each loss was 0 0.52. And since I take 2%, for two positions, on each position will be 1%. So 0.52 means that the market retraces backwards 50%, then I exit it. If the market hit the stop losses, then that will be 1% each. And that will be 2% total. But uh, since I cut the loss very soon like this, um, my drawdown is very minimal like this. Sometimes I cut the loss like 0 0.12 or 0 0.27, 0 0.22. And some break-evens and some winners here in the market. So that's how I manage the risk management. So, and that's why I take trades in a 5 or 15 minute time frame. Because if you only focus on these lower time frames, it's very easy to identify which way it goes after you take trades. So, you can see the result quickly and uh, it's time efficient. You don't want to wait for a long time, for hours, until the market goes backwards. Or personally not. I want to see if the market goes up or not after I take a trade soon. Ideally, in about uh, 30 minutes, I want to see the result. And that's why I take 5 or 15 minute time frames. So here is the graph. and. This is exactly what I talk about. Graph, you know, you see, I had the small losses here and break evens, but this one big winner to cover the previous losses. And afterwards, I get some small break evens and small losses, but these winners cover the previous losses. And if you can trade in this way continuously with discipline and rules, you can make profits in the long run. You can grow assets in the long run this way. So, uh, yeah, and my win rate is 45%. And in terms of win rate, I take break even or loss too. So, out of 22 trades, I took 10 wins and 10 losses and 2 break evens. And that's why it's 45.45% for the win rate. And my profit factor for the month of September was 2.69, which was not really good actually. Usually I have at least a 3 to 5. So clearly the month of September was a bit tough for myself. My return was only 5% so, uh, or 6% for the month of um, September. So I would say that it was a bit tough month. But um, there are a couple of reasons. One is I didn't have enough time to sit down and take trades. I was a bit busy with uh, some projects and also recently uh, I have I've got some projects at house also in the apartment I'm doing some projects also and that's why I was a bit busy so I knew that there was trending markets especially towards the uh, the last week of the September was re re uh, trending but I wasn't able to capture the pips 
So uh, the number of trades, the number of trades was a bit less than usual. But uh, you know, good thing is that I don't lose, or I still make profits, small profits, and I just save it and use it for the trades for the month of October here. So yeah, I will talk about the risk management and also the psychology strategies a bit more deeper level on future future uh, live streams or videos. But uh, in this spreadsheet, I just wanted to mention that this end wave is what you want to grow. So whether you backtest or whether you trade on the real moving market, uh, let's say if you took 30 trades, once you took 30 trades, then make sure to draw the graph like this and see how it looks like. If it's not the end wave, then you have to refine your strategy. And also, if your profit factor is below 3, then you have to redo your strategy. Win rate is not really matter for me. Uh, sometimes it drops down to like 30%, 35% is okay. But I value profit factor more because I'm a trend follower as per higher time frames. And once capture the trend, I trail the profits as long as it goes. So that can raise the profit factor even much more. But unfortunately, in the month of September, the big winner was here, the pound AUD. I got a 38.9 pips win. And also um, another uh, data assist run. I got um, 30. 36.9 pips of win, but that's it. That's it. I didn't get big pips, and that's why I wasn't able to uh, run profits as as good as before in the month of September. So hopefully, we see many big trends in the month of October, but uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so. So let's see. Oh yeah, so USCCAD, it's now coming back to the range, so it may go down from here. As a result, this breakout might be fake, and it could go down here too. Or it may be bullish in the wave, so we'll see which way it goes. And let's briefly come back to the euro dollar, as we saw earlier here. Here's your data, and it looks like this is still uptrending. It's still uptrending, supported by this trend line. Supported. So, looks like this is still bullish. But now, in price action, it's in the P wave. This is called in the P wave. So, Hopefully, it breaks upwards. Hopefully, it breaks upwards in this direction. Because I'm on the Euro data right now on the trade. I bought it at uh, 1.16179. And uh, expecting the market goes up. I already set the break even before the live stream starts. So even if even the price goes backwards from for some reason, I won't lose anyways. So I'm safe in mindset. Right. If he says you say that you take around 15 to 20 trades uh, per month, seems a lot per month for trend following. How many pairs do you act actively trade or is that based on multiple entries on or a pair in order to catch trends? So basically I trade these 20, 21 pairs on my watch list and yeah, sometimes I add more positions, I pyramid. Once I set the break even line, I add more positions along the way and take more trades. So yeah, when the market's active, I take 15 trades, up to 20 trades, but in the month of September was ranging, retracing. 
I could only follow the forward chart or sometimes I was only be able to follow one hour chart directions, which is which tends to be a short lift because one hour can retrace backwards soon. So I get like these small pips, like 10 pips, 15 pips along the way and uh, expect a bigger wave. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't happen in the month of September and that's why my result was like that. All right. Yeah, risk squared ratio is important. Yeah. So I look at the risk squared ratio in terms of the profits. So this is 2.69 as a profit factor is for the profits. But in terms of R multiple, this is in terms of pips. Um, a risk squared risk rate ratio in terms of pips is uh, 2.4. So, yeah, I value risk card ratio more than win rate too, in that sense. Right, looks like Euro dollar is retracing backwards now. So, let's look into the higher time frame again. Let's look at the four or a daily chart. Um, yeah, daily chart still shows that this is retracing backwards now. So, after these previous two small candles, the market is breaking upwards, and I expect the market goes up in this direction. There was a previous support in Tenkan Sen, so it might be resisted and goes bearish from here too. But uh, this is bullish to me at the moment. And let's see. We were watching the 30 minute chart. All right, in 30 minute chart, now the Kumo is up, now the single span A is up, but Kijun Sen flat, the price below the Tenkan Sen. So uh, it's in a bit bearish now. So the market broke the first trend line. And now it's going down to the second trend line. So if it doesn't bounce here, most likely I will exit. Yeah, if it does bounce with this trend line, then most likely I will exit. So let's see. Aham says, uh, Hi K, what is your idea or expected target in pips each time you take a trade? Um, for the target, I set, I set it to 1 to 3. A risk credit ratio is ideal. So if it's 1 to 2 or 1 to 1, it may be a bit risky. So the reward ideally should be 1 to 3, in my opinion. Yeah, John, I will uh, uh, upload a video about the spreadsheet uh, sometime in a future video or live stream. Not, not exactly when, but uh, once I take some trades, I will upload the spreadsheet. Yuan says, can you share the money management spreadsheet? Um, unfortunately, this one is only for the GTS members because uh, I coded everything. I coded all these calculations and graph and these uh, you know pairs and also these all the data. I put it myself and I ask the students to fill this form when they take trades and I give feedbacks in terms of these numbers. So this is only for the DTS members for now. There is also a lot calculator and ring rate and profit break-even spreadsheet too, this one. 
yeah, hopefully I can add uh, gold and other markets also. But for now, this is only for Forex pairs. Laurent says, Hi Kay, do you trade early in the morning? Yes, I do. If there's a big trend, then I will. Yeah, MetaTrader 4 is a good trading platform. Yes, I have been using the MetaTrader 4 for a long time. Now I'm using MT5, but uh, MetaTrader 4 is also a good one still. I think the support is ended. So in case if there's any crash on MT4, you can be supported. But uh, as long as it's working, I think it's a good one. Okay, so I guess I will be ending the live stream for now. So I hope you enjoyed today's live session. So, uh, so new month started in the month of October. I expect more trends to come in the month of October because in, no in September usually it's the end of the holiday, summer holiday. So market tends to be inactive. But uh, October towards in the middle of December usually, in my experience, the market becomes more active. So let's prepare for the next big wave. And uh, yeah, always keep an eye on the markets. So even though there is there is no trend in the market, I recommend everybody to screen charts at least one day so that you won't miss anything in the market. All right, so once again, thank you for joining. If you liked it, please place the like button if you leave. And since I have been uploading some videos recently, please subscribe and click the bell button so that you can notified as I do these live streams or some video sessions all right so once again thank you and have a great great day until i see you next time please stay healthy stay safe and stay gold bye for now matane thank you